All right. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't see the clip, here it is. So everyone can get some context um, and go for and go ahead and play it, Silas. It, things are different now from from ten years ago when Smashbox was the only show that you there was any thought of going on because we're the only podcast available pretty much after a tournament and uh we know you've you know staggered stance last night you obviously talking to the upshot is there anything that any of what? us staggered stance what do you say <laughs> nick and the old nick show. and Matt show it's called staggered stance now <laughs> you were on it last oh. night right oh no no idea had no idea anyway <laughs> yes i was on that show yeah <laughs> and you have your own podcast so <laughs> so so yeah, well, I definitely purposely skipped the uh, whatever that other one's called with Brody for this. Oh, okay. You, you, uh, th I think they're tonight as well, and they go on before yeah. us so. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that's not your favorite one. Busy. Is that a, is that a fair statement? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Do not subscribe. Uh, uh, any any uh, any insight as to why? I just think that it's too. I just think. Yuli's a good friend of mine, so I love Yuli very much, but it's just too gossip and drama and just, like, speculation. Like, okay. I don't even think Brody watches FPO at all, and he's just, like, mm. saying all these things, and okay. I just don't want to go on there and support. All right, so that was a clip uh, taken from terry and jvd's podcast called smashbox which i think actually they might be live right now um so just just to fill the context as much as possible last show we kind of alluded to the fact that we you know we didn't mention we didn't say that we try to get Paige on the show by name but we did allude to the fact that we try to get someone on the podcast and they didn't come on at first when i sent her a text message you know saying hey we'd love to have you on the pod um didn't get a response i was like okay whatever like that's fine she might be busy traveling whatever so then you know i reached out to yuli said hey yuli we're trying to get Paige on can you see if you can get her on she didn't respond to your text message either and so when we didn't hear from her then i kind of knew like okay that's kind of weird and then Obviously, I saw that she was on um, Smashbox, which I thought was like, okay, well, clearly then it wasn't like she was traveling or flying or whatever. And so when I got tagged and seeing that clip, um, I was like, okay, well, we have something to talk about next week, Yuli. And uh, so I did a little bit of investigation on my end. Because if you guys remember, we had Paige on the podcast um, and we talked about a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, so basically, May 6th. So I, I, I figured out kind of the, the I, I locked it down a little bit. May 6th, and Silas, you can throw this up. This was a DM response that Paige had to one of my stories on May 6th of me saying one more year, congratulating my wife of going out and being a Raiderettes cheerleader again for the Las Vegas Raiders. And she responds nicely saying, yay, congrats to both, to you both. Okay, so that was May 6th of this year, I believe, um, which wasn't that long ago. May 18th, um, I think this is, this was last year. This was the which is a full year ago, this was the tweet that we posted where it was Paige saying that she felt like she could be a top 40 MPO player. And so at a certain point, like I thought maybe like that tweet, but that was a year ago that that tweet was posted. And then, you know, almost a year later, she's basically congratulating me and my wife on the news. So whatever happened, it happened after May 6th. Something was said. Some something went down between May 6th and you know last Tuesday that Paige decided to come after me, come after Tour Life. Um, 
Do you want me to respond, Yuli, or do you want to respond first? How do you want to tackle this? Um, you can go. I'll save my thoughts. Okay. So the first thing I want to the first thing I want to say is a lot of people are saying uh, a lot of people maybe I I saw people kind of upset that Terry would even ask this question, and I either I even had Terry reach out to me saying like, hey, this is a question that I ask everyone, yada yada. Um, this is what I'll say on that. I was. I was disappointed, uh, disappointed is not the right word. I was surprised by the response, not by the question, by the response of Terry and JVD. We've had Terry on the podcast. We've had JVD on the podcast. Um, I would consider myself, I, I wouldn't say that we're like friends. It's not like I'm texting Terry like, hey, do you want to go out to get a bite? But I would say that we're friendly and cordial to one another. And... Um, I was I was surprised that there was no pushback on what Paige said to them. I'll say that. Um, I wasn't surprised that he questioned her like, hey, why don't you like going on the whatever, whatever. I was surprised that there wasn't any mention of like, oh, I think Brody and Yuli do watch FPO. Or, oh, I don't think they actually talk that much about gossip over there. There was just laughter and shrugs off and moved on. So that was the first thing that um, I'll say. And and this is what, last thing with the Terry thing too, is like, and I, and I described this a little bit on debate night, Terry's not Barbara Walters in 60 minutes. He's not sitting down and asking questions and not inputting any of his, his input into the conversation. Terry's opinionated, JVD's opinionated. They have opinions about a lot of stuff. They talk about a lot of stuff. I've seen Terry get super fired up to the point of where his face turns completely red because he's yelling at people on his podcast. He gets fired up and he loves it. The fact that they didn't respond at all that's that says volumes to how they feel about me and granted yes is that a weird spot for them to be in a hundred percent i don't think they've ever interviewed someone that basically said like hey i don't like this person so that was a first spot but i'll say this if they had someone that came on and said uh i actually don't like Paige pierce i think she's terrible i don't think their response would have been the same as towards mine and i'll say that so that's where to me um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. A little bit surprised there. Um, next thing, uh, just to kind of break down what, um, just to break down what she was saying about, first off, she thinks I don't watch FPO. Do I watch every single round? No. Do I watch every single live coverage? No. A lot of times I'm actually in, I saw a lot of jokes. Perfect. Good joke. I've made this joke before. A lot of times I'm playing at the same time as live coverage is. So I can't watch it. Uh, but I try to do my best to at least watch Jomez final round. Especially I watch it like front to beginning if we have a guest on like Holland or if we have a guest on like Anakin. Um, Anakin, excuse me, Anakin. Uh, I definitely try to do my best to, to watch it and have an idea. Now, so that, that's just false. Second thing, this idea of we're gossipy and drama. Let me give you the definition real quick of what drama is, ladies and gentlemen, okay? For those that are wondering, the definition of drama, an exciting, emotional, or unexpected series of events or set of circumstances. That is the definition of drama. Now, let me get you some antonyms of drama, things that are opposite of drama monotonous, uneventful, uninterested, apathetic, indifferent, boring. Does that sound like anything you want your podcast to be? Does that sound like anything you want a sport to be? I think there's a huge misconception between gossip and drama. Those two things are vastly different. Gossip to me is rumors talking about stuff that you're not 100% sure if it's factual. Drama, if we're speculating about someone's game, if we're speculating about maybe an injury, if we're speculating about things, that's what sports is. That's what you have to do with sports. 
And real quick, if you want to take a step out of disc golf and look at what's going on in other sports, stuff that we don't talk about, Yuli, and I hold, I hold a lot of pride in this. We don't talk about off the field stuff. We're not talking about that person does drugs. That person is drunk. We're not talking about their party things. We're not talking about their sexuality. We're not talking about what who what who their partners are. We're not talking about anything. We're not talking about they just got divorced or we're not talking about any of that stuff. And you better believe if disc golf ever gets more popular, that is going to be brought up. That stuff will be found out. There will be articles written about that. 1000%. So over here you want people to talk about you. You want people to watch you. You want people to, to praise you. You can't have it all. You can't have it all. And I don't know why the dogs are going nuts behind me. But to me, I find it very crazy when there's people over here saying, look at me, look at me, talk about me, talk about me. And then when you do and you say something they don't like, they go, whoa, 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 whoa. But you, you can't say that. It can only be positive. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. Well, a lot to unpack here. The first thing I want to say is I saw a lot of comments on, uh, and this is just like across the board over the last however long it's been. And it kind of, uh, I wanted to straighten something out. So, a lot of comments saying, oh, because Paul's a team captain, he's going to just like smooth things over and do things the right way, which is true. But you don't get a captain seat because you didn't do that before. That's who I am. I talk kindly about people. I try to um, see things from both sides. I think that's why Brody really likes me on here, right? Is because I look things at both sides. I don't really press on a lot of different topics or this, that, and the other thing. So for those people who are like, Paul's opinions aren't real because I have certain hats that I wear, that is false. That's just who I am. That's how I got in the position that I am right now is because I say what I mean, and it's usually pretty kind. Now, as far as the, this whole thing with, with Paige, like... The only thing that upset me a little bit was when she said unsubscribe. And I don't know if that meant, like I said, I look things at both sides. I don't know if that meant she's unsubscribed or she's telling other people to unsubscribe. I don't try to like just push my agenda on whatever. Right. I think we probably lean towards one or the other. Right. Yeah. That sucks because we do a lot of work over here. We don't just do work to uh, make ourselves more famous or whatever. I do this work because I love disc golf and I want disc golf to grow, right? That's why I show up here every single week. We do these interviews so that people can hear what's going on and we can get more insight into the game so people understand the game more and it's a fun watch every time they, they get to know these players, right? So that they can learn, so they can root for their new favorite player. Let's say that nobody had a, a interview with Ezra before. I haven't seen a lot of them right? We get them on here. People listen to them. They learn about them. They become fans. That's important to me. When you have a podcast, it is our job to talk about stuff in a way that puts it out to the public. And people are so, I want to say soft. Because that's the way that it is, right? People Good are very word. soft in this world and in disc golf to where if it's not completely over the top to where they like it, they don't want it. And that's not the way sports is. Like when I see somebody mess up on the course and they're on the podcast, I'm going to ask them a question about it. That's what we do. That's how I want to know. I want other people to know because those are the questions that everybody's thinking. And so it's my job to t ask that question. And if it gets clipped and it becomes viral or whatever, so be it. It's a real question that I really felt passionate about it. And it, and it's fine for me to say that now, if you don't like that, then yes, unsubscribe. That's your agenda. That's on you. Right. As far as Terry and Johnny Vigo, 
I don't know what else they're supposed to do there. They have a follow up question. You no, know, it's they're in a t- they're in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot. I, I was just saying. I, mean? I think if it was a different situation, their response would be different. That's yes. what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, which which of course. And that and, and, again, and that's fair. That's it, fair. I that's what I'm saying. It's like I I was surprised because I thought they would have pushed back, and because they didn't, that just lets me know where we stand. That's all. That's yeah, all. Maybe or maybe it's nothing. I don't know because I'm not them. If, if, Yuli, if someone if someone came on, if I went on some podcast and they're like, "Yeah, your co-host kind of sucks. Why do you have a pod with him?" Would you be? Would I be like, ha, 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 "Yeah, okay. Um, what else do you have?" You, you see, what I'm saying like, no, I would have your back, and that's what I'm saying is like, those are people that I thought would have my back in that situation. They didn't. Completely fine. I'm not. I'm not sad about it, right? But it just lets me know where I am with them. I also That's don't all. think it's their job to have your back in that situation or to have my back in that situation. I think the job is to make sure that the person that's on their podcast is comfortable. And that's the way well, that they, they like to, they like to have a comfy podcast. Yes. And that's exactly, that's my point. That's yeah. the way they run their podcast, Yep, which is fine. That's completely right? fine. Totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Is that what we do here? We ask tough questions sometimes. No, and again, people are saying it, I'm not saying it's Terry's job. I think what Terry did is fine. All I'm saying is it let me know where I stand with Terry. That is what I'm letting you know. That's all I'm saying. I don't care what Terry did. I'm just saying it let, I got to learn where I stand with Terry. And that's all. My next thing is, is I don't want anybody to unsubscribe. So I will say this. I will defend, <laughs> I will dis- defend my, my co host here and saying, I know Brody watches other things. I know he does his research. He runs his whole show. He does it from start to finish. He writes down all the stuff. He sends it over. And then Silas does a big thing. I do. I don't do that much. I come on here and I give my opinions. So if that's what Paige thought, that is not true. I hope that helps. You know, I hope that helps because that's coming from me. That's not true. Brody works his butt off in a lot of things. I don't work with people who don't work their butt off. I've said that before. So that's my, that's my opinion about, about the whole thing. Really? Um, so you, I think for most people that are listening to this podcast, cause we might have some new people, right? We might have some people yeah. that are bouncing in tonight and listening for the first time, or maybe haven't listened for a while. Um, so, so they're popping in. I appreciate, um, I appreciate having people, you know, talking the co- the comments around. It's, it's interesting hearing everyone's different sides and whatever. Um, so obviously if you know me, I'm, I'm going to make jokes out of it. I'm going to make jokes out of it. It's, it's too easy. It's fun. I love it. Um, I'm all about going back and forth, right? I love it. If you want to come at me, I'll come at you. Let's have a back and forth, have a good time, you know, and then shake hands and be like, all right, that was sweet deuces. Right? So I obviously first day of coverage, I'm doing orders. We did, uh, we sold 650 cards on Wednesday night. So I'm doing orders for like two hours, you know, getting all these orders set it up and I'm watching FPO coverage. So I take a little screenshot and post it on Twitter and I do the nothing to see here. Just me watching some FPO disc golf. And obviously I knew exactly what I was doing. I thought it was, I thought this was hilarious. I thought it was a funny post. Many of my followers, many of you guys thought it was funny. Uh, however, there were some people that didn't get the joke. Or maybe there were some people that uh, just didn't find my sense of humor, which is fine. I'm not a comedian. I'm not that funny of a person. There's a lot of things that uh, I say that I think is funny, and Kelsey looks at me like I'm an idiot, and that is completely fine. Um, so I, I got a response from this one guy. Don't throw it up just yet, Silas. Hold on, um, because I need to give context to it first. So his response, he quote tweeted me and said, look at me keep me relevant was his response to what I said, which I then saw his profile like I do. And I want to be like, all right, like I got this guy coming at me. I got to, you know, I got to get some Intel. He, he probably has all this stuff to use against me. I have no idea who this guy is. So I got to get a little bit of Intel here. So, uh, you know, I click on his profile and right then and there, I was like, Oh, this, Oh, this guy made it too easy. 
this guy made it too easy. So I hit him with the, um, I hit him with the pretty funny comment coming from you. And his profile picture is him flexing in the gym. It's a gym selfie of him flexing. Solid and was, pick. And I was like, I just thought that was, I thought that was hilarious that some, he's coming at me for trying to be relevant and pay attention to me. And the person doing this has a picture of them flexing in the mirror as their profile picture. Um, now people took that all sorts of different ways, which I think, uh, says a lot. If you took it a certain way, I think that says a lot about you and not me. Cause I just thought it was funny that he obviously has a picture of him trying to get attention. Um, and I'll say that. So Twitter was fun. If you don't follow me on Twitter, and you want a fun old time every once in a while, or you want to send me a good ribbing if I finish an 80th or 90th place and say that, you know, you would beat me in a C tier, whatever, whatever. Uh, that is completely fine as well. Um, I think if you're going to give it, I've always learned you had to take it. And I'm willing to take it. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong, when I do something incorrect. Um, and yeah, I don't know if there's really anything else. I guess we'll answer maybe some chat. If you guys feel like there's anything on that side of the story that we didn't really um, cover, but I think for the most part, we've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, I think we've covered most of it. Are we still cool with Drew Gibson after his tweet? Here's the thing with Drew, guys. Drew, Drew says probably as much, if not more stupid stuff than I do. Was his tweet dumb? Yes, his tweet was very dumb. I don't think you should be telling another professional athlete that they should quit and go to a different sport. Was he trying to do it in a way that uh, was like nice? Maybe. Cause I guess he was like saying like, Hey, go be, you can be super successful in golf and people aren't going to come after you, which again, they do come after me, but uh, go do that. I get it. Um, do I think Drew tweets a lot of stuff to stir up conversation? Sure. I think, yeah, of course. Do I tweet a lot of stuff because I know it's going to be funny and it's going to get people riled up? 1000%. Yeah. But everything I tweet, I believe in. Where I think maybe Drew sometimes maybe makes some tweets um, that maybe he doesn't believe in, but he knows is, is, is what people want to hear. I don't know. Drew, Drew's an interesting character. I don't have anything bad against Drew. Drew just says a lot of stuff, and I just, I kind of leave it at that. Same. Brody, do you have an earnest interest in having a good relationship with Paige? This is, like, I don't, I haven't, I don't know what I've done to make her upset. Well, maybe she just doesn't like the pod. Maybe she doesn't have a problem with you. Maybe she just doesn't like the pod. And if that's the case, that's fine. Um, I'm still going to be cordial with her. If I see her, I'll say hello. And she's welcome um, on the pod. Yeah. 100%. When, whenever she wants to come on. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely come on. Yeah. As always. Um, yeah. When will Paul be on? When will Paul McBeth be on the Paul? Like I said, if Paul wants to come on the pod, we obviously are going to have to talk about the situation. We can't just have him come on. I've been very good at talking about him and leaving everything behind and just being very objective of what, how his playing is, but if he comes on the pod and we don't talk about what went down. People are going to be very upset. I'm going to tell you that right now. People are going to be very upset because there's still a lot of question marks to a lot of people out there. So if he wants to come on, he has an open invite. We would just have to, we would have to talk it out. And I don't know if he wants to do that. I'll leave it at that. 